What happens when you get into debt? There's nothing mm. left. Mm. Nothing. And you can't. I'm going to show them to pay this. Or won't pay it back. It doesn't matter what you want, sir. Unfortunately, that's the law. We meet the High Court enforcement agents who are pushed to their limits. Evil! You have to turn to hell! Well, I'll smash the window then. It's false imprisonment. Dealing with desperate debtors. Hello? In dramatic situations. You want to stand here like a big man? Leave it. Talk to me. Talk to push me. me about. We meet the people who are losing their homes. <laughs> and their possessions. The desk will go in. <laughs> Everything. You're joking. Okay. Because whatever happens. High Court enforcement. If you can't pay, they'll take it away. A recent government report reveals the total number of traveller caravans in England has increased by 30% in the last decade. For some councils in the south of England, the cost of evicting travellers has nearly doubled in the last three years. Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are High Court enforcement agents. They travel the country collecting debts and repossessing homes. Have we got an address? Yeah, it's on the paperwork. Today they're in Luton, Bedfordshire, to serve a common law eviction notice on a traveller community who have set up home on a warehouse car park. The travellers will be given 24 hours to pack up and leave. I think they have got a big traveller problem here. We've had this experience before. Yeah. You never know when you go to a traveller's site. It might be two caravans, it might be 22 caravans, and you really don't know the reaction you're going to get. It could be volatile, so you have to be very, very wary of that. The clock will start ticking as soon as the agents serve the notice. Straight onto the site. Might as well. I can see the badge on the front and realise that we didn't mean business. Paul and Steve have brought a colleague for backup. How you doing? All right, All right. sir. All good? Hiya. Hi. <coughs> oh. They'll watch us and... Hello. Hi there. What are you here for? You know why we're here. What? You know why we're here. Here you are, will you? Steve starts logging all the vehicles currently at the car park. It's a friendly visit. Yeah? Yep, always. What we're going to do, what we come to do... Don't hurt you. Eh? Don't hurt you. OK. The travellers clearly aren't prepared to listen. Got stoned. Then, suddenly, the situation takes a turn for the worse. Yeah, no, but you're instructing them. If you break the window, there's going to be a load more problems. I wouldn't do it. Please. No. Thank you. We will do it. Oh, if they break the window, you are responsible. How am I responsible? You are, because they're yours. How am I? They're not mine. They're not mine. I smashed the back window on the van. It's sort of fragmented. It might just fall out. The team called the police. Just stay by the van. There's stones being thrown, the vehicle's being attacked, the window's smashed, so we have ongoing breach of the pit. While they wait for police backup, Paul goes to speak to other members of the community. Is somebody going to pay for the back window they've just smashed on the van? Can you pick out what child done? Sorry? Can you... Did you know what child done? Because there's all different parents here for all different children. That's OK, we've got the police coming. Despite the hostile reception, the agents still have to serve the 24-hour eviction notice. Why are you here for anybody? We're here for this. For what? Just, just have a read. Are you reading? No, I've got to give it to him, sorry. 
because he's older, so I have to deal with him because yeah, he's older. Go on. It's a 24 hour notice. Yeah. You just ask him. That's all you have to do. That's it, that's all that's I'm doing. You don't have to bring the, the army with you. No, 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 no. Yeah. If you they want just... an army, we'll get an army. We're not interested yeah. in the armies. Okay, so can I ask you? What? Will you be gone tomorrow? No. We will come back tomorrow. Come back tonight if you want, Priscilla. No, 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 we won't be back tonight. It's a 24 hour notice. We're asking you to leave the land within 24 hours. Yeah. See what happens. See what happens. Can I promise you? If somebody's likely to kick off, we will try to defuse any potential hostility by having a sensible conversation. Uh, Steve is better at that than I am because he's a bit more patient. He will actually talk to them. Just so you know, it's a 24 hour notice for you to get your vans out. If you could pack up, it'd be great. The notice has been served. The police are on their way. The three caravans will have to be gone by tomorrow. But there's a problem. Who's going to open the gate? Do we have to weld that off? How did you get in? That was opened. One of the barriers has been locked to stop any more caravans moving in. And Paul and Steve don't have the key. It's padlocked. We'll get someone to unlock it. When? I can't do it today. It'll be tomorrow. It's got to be today. If you got today, honestly, you have more trouble. It's today. If you don't move it, I cut it off. If that's not going to be open tonight, there'll be damage done to it. I'm only telling you, I'm only telling that, you. That's fine, you've told me, that's good. But I have to tell you that we have to give you 24 hours notice. So we've both been told. You're scared. Listen, I'm not scared, Bless trust you. me. You. I really oh, am not. Why would I be scared? scared why would I, why would I possibly be scared? It's a standoff. With tensions rising, will the agents be able to gain control of this volatile situation? Now, the agents face a job that is spiralling out of control. OK, so that's locked. Who's going to open the pavia? We'll get in touch with the landlord. If you don't move it, we will. It's your choice. If you can open the pavia today, we'll be gone today. How, how long will it take you to couple up and go? Half an hour, an hour. Having said they wouldn't leave, the travellers now seem anxious to go as soon as possible. So the team need to track down the keys to the locked barrier. To try and get the office to ring the, uh, ring the landlords. Phone and direct, we'll cover it both ways. Hello, it's Paul Bowell. Um, we just need to, uh, if we can get the landlord, if we can get the barriers open. They've said they'll move. Yeah, I wonder if you can help me. I'm a high court enforcement agent, and we're at one of your sites in Luton to move some travellers on. There is a barrier restricting them to leave your property. We would like someone with access to remove the barrier so they can get out. We're just waiting for somebody to come down with the keys. If we get the barriers moved, we'll clear them off. We'll see what happens. Not long after, the police arrive. Same shit, different day, really. Uh, the only downside to this is that they smashed the back window on the van there. Kids, all under 10. So oh, then, right, OK. If you just look for the... purely for the record, we'll need a crime number for the van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The children that smashed the van window are too young to be charged, but Paul hopes a police presence will calm the situation. The police are usually very understanding and very helpful. They have the cachet of authority, which we would appear not to have, they provide a function that we can't provide. Word has got around about the agent's visit. A traveller from a nearby site arrives. What's happening here? No, we're just, just asking them to move on, that's all. Why did you lock them? Why did no, no, we, we didn't lock them. It was locked when we arrived. So I, I never seen you putting a lock on No. Them. As soon as they get their vans ready, we'll, we'll let them out. What notice did you give them? Well, we give them the 24-hour notice now. Well, then they have 24 hours to leave, haven't they? Yes, they do. I've explained that all to them. Well, OK, around here. what are you doing here? They live around the corner in the other camp up here. OK. We've got a phone call okay. to come down and okay. see what's going on. Yeah. We have them locked in what now as well. They have 24 hours to leave. Listen or not? When you go to a traveller's site, the more people you get, there is always a possibility that someone will kick off. So you have to be aware of all your circumstances and surroundings. What the situation is, we came to give them the notice. Who say do you want? Oh, you're not listening to me. I am listening to <laughs> okay, you. OK, OK. What we've done was we come to give him the notice. He says, look, if you, get, if you unlock the barrier, we'll go. I said, how long do you need? He said, half hour. I said, OK, 
come back, hook up, we'll unlock the barrier, and that's it. Well, you're kind of clouding the out. There's only one lady there, lads, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But they have 24 hours, like, you know what I mean? We gave him that. He said, no, get, we'll do it now. So... There's some of the boys back now, right? Yeah. With the wider traveller community becoming involved, Steve is worried the situation could escalate. Finally, an employee at the warehouse arrives with the key to the barrier. So that's for these, is it? For this one? I, I don't know, it's one of them. OK. All right, mate. Yeah, lovely, thanks. We got the keys. Good job. Give us a hand, then. After a tense start to the job, the travellers are now ready to move. There may have only been two or three caravans there, but there was another site quite locally, and everybody could have rallied round together and caused us a huge problem. So it's just a case of being aware and trying to work out an agreement, and that's the best way to do it. You need to slide it that way. Yeah. Much to the relief of the agents, the travellers are leaving. Keys come, they kept to their word. Their community works. It just works different to ours. But it works. Look at that, all in one. Steve oh, locks the gate so. so no one can return. Done. Okay, yeah. You're a man. And so are you. It's the same with everything. You talk to people with respect, you know, you're going to get, hopefully, respect back. You, if you're an arse, you're just going to get an arse back. Recent reports have shown that more and more young people are struggling to find rental accommodation. Many are turning to their parents to guarantee their tenancies, as cautious landlords are worried about being owed money when a tenant leaves. High Court Enforcement Agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are on their way to St. Helens, Merseyside, to recover a debt of over £3,000 owed to a landlord. Yeah, it's uh, just a residential, mate, and the claimant as well, it's just a private individual. Private individual, so there's always a story behind ah, the private a private individual. There. The landlord went to court when his tenant, Heidi, altered the flat and didn't restore it to its original condition at the end of her lease. Well, this looks a bit like... Um... Yeah, it looks a bit like Ramsey Street, doesn't it? Down, down we go. She failed to pay the court-awarded costs, but Heidi's not the person named on the writ. A little bit. Oh, there's somebody in! Yay! Whoop, whoop, whoop. The kitchen. Let's go and have a chat, eh? Heidi's parents signed as guarantors when their daughter began the tenancy. Now they are liable for the debt. Oh, my God, it's one house. Oh, this is one house. Hello there. Um, after Christopher and Christine call quits, is that yourselves? Uh, my name is Mr McCracken, I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. It's regarding um, a High Court writ we've been asked to execute on behalf of Michael Cotham. Yeah. You'll have to execute it, we just Yeah, no problem. Um, it's regarding an outstanding High Court writ, the total amount of £3,029.27. You'll need to bring Yeah. Take it, are you signed guarantors? Well, I stood as guarantor and I went up in court with my daughter with her. Yeah. And um, it went down to one thousand and some at store. Yeah. How come it's three thousand? It will be high court costs because it's a CCG that hasn't been honoured, you see, so it's been transferred. So that's it there. So what happens here now? You need to make payment, if not, it's removal of goods. Okay. No, there's, there's nothing mm. left, mate. Mm. Nothing. So we have to do. Yeah. Yeah. Look, we, we are willing to work with you, obviously. Yeah, yeah, you know, so just we're not yet upset anyone. Of course it is. Of course it is. Obviously, I'm not saying that in the next half an hour 
we're going to start taking goods far from it. Yeah. You know what I mean? We are here to get this sorted one way or another. That's you know what I mean? I want it sorted you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's not my belt. No. It's, it's her belt. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. I understand yeah. that. But it's just the fact whether being a guarantor, it means that uh, we, we'd need something one way or another. If not, we'll have to start inventory of goods. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not being funny, but there's nothing you can take Nothing. Debt can destroy families. N not just divide them, it can destroy families. I'll help my children if they need something, but I will never sign guarantor. My dad told me at a very young age, if you can't afford something, you go without it. Heidi, the daughter who ran up the debt, isn't answering her phone. It's the With no word from Heidi, her mother Christine tries to track her down. Hello? Can you get in touch with Heidi? They lips are coming and take all my stuff. They're coming and take all my stuff. Don't get upset. Because we've stood as guarantor. But she should sort this. I'll be taking goods to the value of £3,000 and a half pounds. But he said he should be paying this. Mortgage is due yeah. next week. We've not even got that until you get paid. Her dad, Christopher, decides to confront Heidi face to face. If you sign the guarantor, you are legally required to pay the bill if uh, the actual tenant doesn't. They've signed with their daughter and uh, it's backfired. Hopefully, the father can get the daughter out of work, talk some sense into her. That's the matter is we're not here to get involved with that. We're here to collect on behalf of the claim that the law is the law. Any news? No, she's sent to the text and she's not even heard nothing back. 20 minutes later, Heidi's dad, Christopher, calls home. He's finally managed to speak to Heidi. How much will you accept? I think how much can you get, that's the question. It's £3,229.27, and I mean, £200 isn't going to be enough. There's probably going to be a minimum of £1,000 because if that isn't made, then the claim's just going to turn around and say, right, you're going to have to take the goods. <laughs> then Christine gets news that she can't quite believe. Mm. Is that what she said? That uh, it's your debt, sort of? Oh, unbelievable. With daughter Heidi refusing to help, her family now face a crisis. Now, the couple have to make payment today or face goods being taken away to cover the debt. Mum is very upset, as you can understand, trying to help the kids doing the right thing and then it uh, turns right and bites them in the ass. Heidi's father is still out trying to raise some funds. Oh, and then gets... work and then you get this. It's not fair. The situation is dividing the family. How can some daughter she is? It's not how Everybody's worse. Yeah, but you've there's no need for it. A, a big need. This isn't your debt, this is Ivy's debt. That's what happens when she brushes things under carpet and bathes and edits sand. It's all right for Ivy, she's going on a nice sunny holiday, isn't she, in a few days? Shocking that you, you help your kids. You see that? You turn it down. 
upset. Debt is one of the worst things. It can split families up, it can tear families apart, but it can also bring families together as well. A family member returns to help out. There's 300. No oh. way. No! She's not getting a pass. <laughs> Mom, don't get upset. <laughs> Lord, you can't leave yourself with nothing. <laughs> it's clear the family can't cover the £3,000 debt. And with little to take away, Stuart calls the office. The parents have been spot on, in all fairness. Um, obviously panicked and worried and everything like that. The father's gone to see the daughter at work, and the daughter's turned around and gone, well, it's your debt, you pay for it then. <laughs> if I'm completely honest, we need to come up with a payment plan because there's nothing much in the house. No. Oh, I'm just going to say six months, and then we can take it from there. He's back now. He's busy in a set, by the way. Nearly an hour after leaving, Christopher returns. You all right? Go on after you. All right. All right. Thousand pound a night. Yeah, I've just spoke to the officer. It shouldn't be an issue today. Yeah. Okay. Christopher has managed to gather enough money to satisfy the agents today. Do you think you'll be able to clear it before the six months? We'll try and, we'll try and get something yeah. sorted yeah. out. Yeah, a bit, a bit of a shock. Yeah, me. of course. Yeah. I, mean, say you're to the kids I mean, do anything for your family, but not rubbing salt in the wounds. Yeah. When when your wife told me, I was like, Wrong, yeah. Anyway, thanks very much. No worries. All right. All right. So hope you get it sorted. All right. This case has had a big impact on Stuart and Vic. When you've got a genuine, hard-working family like that. Yeah. I do feel for people like this. I'll be honest, I still have got to take the money, but I, feel, I, I do feel for them. Oh, I'm with you, mate. And then the daughter to turn around and turn and say, well, it's your debt, sort it out. That's when it hit me. And these things don't hit me at all, but oh my I know. God. What a daughter. A recent survey has shown that a typical landlord is owed over one and a half thousand pounds in outstanding rent. And one in five landlords fear that rent arrears will put them out of business within a year. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are in East London. They're on their way to evict a family from their rented home. So what was the number again? Number 128. The landlords claim the tenants, Mr and Mrs Popescu, stopped paying rent seven months ago. Somebody's standing in the bed down the bottom there. But the agents aren't here to collect the money. They're here to repossess the property today for the landlords. Hey, how are you? You haven't got keys or anything, have you? No, no just no. give us a few minutes then. OK. Here we go again. We were supposed to be met by the locksmith. The locksmith's not here. Every day of the week, we meet landlords who have lost thousands of pounds because the tenants won't pay. It takes a little while to get through the system. They have to serve notices on the property. Then it has to go through the court, which could take another month. More often than not, the landlords are turned into high court enforcement for the simple reason it's a maths equation. They either lose money or get their property back. No one appears to be in. This is high court enforcement. We have an eviction order for this property. You don't open the door, we'll break it down. Thank you. The High Court writ allows the agents to gain entry by force if necessary. It doesn't matter if you break it, because it's... It doesn't matter if I break it? Yeah. Thank you.
Hello? No one in. There's no sign of the tenants. But it's clear this is a cared for family home. Nobody here at all. It's enough beds and people by the looks of it. The landlords are eager to get possession as fast as they can. We need them moved up today as well because we're looking to exchange and complete property today as well. Oh, really? Yeah, because we were well behind on our rent raise. With no rent from the tenants, the landlords have fallen behind on their mortgage payments and decided to sell up. The sale is due to be finalised today, but they can't complete until the tenants have gone and the house is cleared. I can only advise you that if you need to complete on the property today and give vacant possession, yep. you'll have to move the stuff into storage somewhere. OK, fine, we'll do that then. They've got a buyer, it's been sold. They're waiting to sign the papers, otherwise they might lose the buyer. So that's why they're chomping at the bit sort of thing. The eviction is now legally complete. But just as the agents are leaving, Mrs. Popescu returns home. Hi there. Is this your house? It's clear the agent's visit has come as a shock to Romanian-born Mrs. Popescu. Do you understand English? No, English. Okay, okay. If you have somebody that speaks better English, I can explain to them and they can tell you. She calls a relative for help. You're her cousin, okay. Uh, what's happened is we have a writ of possession from the High Court and this property is being repossessed now. She can go inside and collect her stuff. She has an hour to get her personal effects, identification, any medication, and then she can take, take the paperwork down the council and they may help her out. We'll be gone within an hour. I'll pass you back now. Hello. It's not clear whether Mrs. Popescu fully understands the situation, but with two small children, Steve is concerned that she seeks emergency accommodation as soon as possible. You see this? You need to take that letter and go to the council. Stay. Stay. You need to pack bags in a suitcase. Yeah? yeah. You... No. A, a smaller. So, I think we're getting there. It happens from time to time, they don't understand. So you have to explain it as reasonably and easy as possible so that they get the gist of it and understand that it is final. So they're now, the young lady's now getting her stuff together and I guess the gentleman will be here as soon as he can to help out. Mrs Popescu now realises that she has to leave, but she's waiting for relatives to come and help. <laughs> Steve tries to get her moving. Hello. You do, could you just explain to her that she needs to start packing her clothes and things that she needs for a few days? But she's not. She's just standing here looking at me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Let her get on with it now. Just stand in the hallway out the way. And, uh... Finally, Mrs. Popescu starts to pack. Outside, the landlords are getting anxious. As they're on a deadline for the sale, they need the tenants to leave as soon as possible. This might need to be over there are cousins on his way. He said he'd be there as quick as he could. But inside, Mrs. Popescu is reluctant to leave before her relatives arrive. Where is the man on the phone? Through traffic. Yeah. Well, he needs to come. Quick, yeah, quick. Yeah. She calls again for help. 
die Florin Pion gissen. The agents have been at the property for nearly two hours. It is 22. No one has arrived to help Mrs. Popescu. Do you want me to be Mr. Nasty? Yeah, I don't do Mr. Nasty. They've given her extra time to pack and explained the situation carefully many times. But she still seems reluctant to leave. The toughest aspect of this job is if you've got an eviction that involves children. I've got children of my own. But we go back into the fact that we high court enforcement agents, that we won't walk away. Paul wants Mrs. Popescu to go to the council to get emergency accommodation as soon as possible. We need to go now. Please. Mrs. Popescu decides to wait outside for her husband to arrive. Some jobs it does tug the heartstrings, you know, because you think, you know, it's not always their fault. It could be somebody else's fault, but they're the ones that are on the piece of paper and they have to go. Mr. Popescu has finally arrived home. I've offered him for him to go back in the house. If he's happy, we're, we're happy as well. Because the landlords want the house cleared today, they've allowed Mr. Popescu to collect all of the family's belongings. And he's brought a friend to act as translator. We didn't uh, actually knew they will come today. He was about one hour and a half driving to, to reach here. The friend is trying to help the family find emergency accommodation. But it turns out the couple have more than just two children. Uh, are seven in total, but uh, kids, most of them are kids. The council said to us uh, they'll find uh, an accommodation for them. See, I, we don't know certainly, 100%, if they'll have or not, we will take them, as, as you see, all of them. But we are not happy because how is it possible just to leave everything outside with the kids? They, they'll come from the school now. It's very scary. Steve checks the family have all their belongings. Is there anything else inside that he wants to take out? We took everything. OK. The eviction is finally over. That's it. All done. With the house now cleared, the landlords can complete the sale of the property. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate That's OK. It. But Mr and Mrs Popescu face a difficult search for a new home. Tragic, really trying to find accommodation for seven children. You know, in as much as you've got young kids there, not their fault they've been evicted. The agents have managed to bring a challenging eviction to a conclusion. Let's rock and roll. The amount of money owed by British businesses is at an all-time high. According to a new report, the number of business debts referred to the courts has jumped 30% in the last 12 months. Ashbourne, Derbyshire. Stuart and Vic are on an industrial estate, about to serve a high court writ. How much is it for? £5,315.99. And, and a family-run business, Morrison Fork Truck Services, owes the money to a local tyre supplier. It all looks quite busy. There's nothing worse than coming onto an industrial estate and all the units are up for that. If they can't or won't pay, the agents can seize the company's goods to the same value of the debt. So hopefully we're looking for parts that have already been paid for, vans, 
I'm hoping you were looking for cash first, mate. Obviously cash. I'm mean, talking about worst-case scenario. Thank uh, mate. Uh, which one is it, do you think? Next one. Here it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's two vans there. That'll do. Keep our van here so they can't remove any of the vehicles. You do HPI on those vehicles for me. Yeah, I'll do it, mate. The vans are blocked in, but Stuart isn't taking any chances. The key's in it. By seizing the vehicle, he's hoping to force the company to pay up. When we turn up at a premises and we see a vehicle, that's the first thing that we go for, simply because, from the point of our defendant's perspective, if it was going to affect my business, I'd want to try and get sorted out as quickly as possible. Stuart. All right, you're all right. Rafter David Morrison. You've done that, mate. I've got to get the phone out of it. I've got the keys at the moment. Why? Because we're high court enforcement agents. Oh, the vehicle's been seized, yeah. That's what Gnell makes a good job. Yeah. Do you know a David Morrison? Yeah, I do know him. Yeah, he's not here at the minute, though. Isn't he able to get him on the phone? Please. Cheers, mate. Thanks very much. But if the vans are on finance, the team can't seize them against the debt. Vic's check brings good and bad news. This is on finance. Good. That one isn't. Oh, OK. Right. No problem, that's fine. The agents continue to secure assets at the property. This vehicle here and that vehicle are both free of finance, so I'm going to put a quick clamp on it. With two vehicles under the control of the High Court, the agents now have leverage. Vic gets the owner of the business on the phone to try to secure payment of the debt. Hello, is that Mr Morrison? Hello? Me at your premises with a High Court writ of control to collect an outstanding balance of £5,315.99. Well, what are you going to do with that payment? Never mind about that, because he owes me some money. I'll sort that out with him later. Well, I'm here now. My court enforcement agent... Yeah, there we are, just a minute. But then, Mr Morrison makes a claim that could stop the agents in their tracks. Sorry, sir, just say that again. Everything belongs to the bank. I'm first call on all my assets. He says that all the business equipment, including the vehicles, are under the bank's control, as a guarantee against a loan that the company has taken out. If he's telling the truth, the agents can't seize any assets. We come here with two options, to collect payment or remove goods to the value of. If we can't remove goods, there's not a lot we can do. At the moment, it's a bit of a standoff. The owner's son, James, comes out to see Stuart. That belongs to the bank, everything. All right, so we need to see, we just need to see some proof. There are many ploys that defendants use to try and stop us doing our job and collecting payments. They can be rude, they can be aggressive, they can lie, but it's not going to deter us. Any information you can give us? I'm sure, mate, the bank owns everything. James says they owe the money because they had a gentleman's agreement to refer customers to the claimant's business. But the deal went bad. People would ring up for tyres, so I'd yeah. give him their number, then he was supposed to give us commission on what it's sold. Yeah. And then when we wanted tyres fit in, he did our tyres, then didn't give us a commission. Because there was no uh, written agreement, Yeah. we had no proof, so oh, that's man. why I won't pay. Yeah. So basically, he just ripped us off. Despite James's claims about the reason for the debt, Stuart needs to see proof that the bank has control over the business assets. He talks again to David, the owner. I need to make it clear to you, sir, the clock is ticking. We haven't seen any documentation at the moment. Unless we get some proof, we will have to remove goods, OK? Well, you listen to me. Yeah? yeah. Go on, then. document in my drawer. Just tell my son to get it out for me. OK, no problem. Apparently, there's a document that you've got hold of. Yeah, I'm just printing them off for you now. Right, OK, no problem. Fuck you, though. Oh, where, which one, Tally, ask him? Which, which drawer? It's which... not a fucking drawer! Have you printed these off the other thing for me? I don't think he's a good. That's why I did it. I'm paying for it. He owes me money. Dad, which drawer is it in, mate? In the bottom drawer? Yeah. In there, yeah. Switch bottom drawer in the plastic folder? In the plastic drawer? Yeah. I know, yeah, I can't see it there from there. Second drawer there. Second drawer there. Oh, I can see it there. 
After a fraught search, James finally finds the documents. I've got it, I've got it. All right, yeah. And it appears this time the debtor is telling the truth. That's basically the bank saying that they own everything, isn't it? Yeah. That's what it is? Yeah. So that van's owned by the bank then? Yeah. The agents are stuck. The bank has control of the assets, so they can't be taken away. That's frustrating. Basically, what's happened is Lloyd's have got a charging order on any goods, chattels, or anything belonging to the company that makes that company a profit. The defendant has quite clearly said that he's not making any payment because he knows that there's nothing here that we can take control of. But the debt still needs to be paid. He's gone down the legal road. Yes, yeah, so that's... And at the end of the day, black and white, the court has decided he's owed the money. The debt is still there. outstanding. And if payment's not made, then it's going to be a winding up petition right. against the company. That's the thing. It's David you need to speak to again, yeah. isn't it? It's not yeah. me. The agents can't do anything more today, but if the company doesn't settle the debt, the family business could face further serious action. It's always a lesson to be learned uh, in situations like this. If you're in business, you need to get it on a contract. It doesn't matter if it's your best friend or your brother or your uncle. In today's business, everybody's looking out for themselves. So take note, kids. Listen to be learned. We might be back. You never know. We might be back. Next time. I'll be honest with you, mate. I'm banging my head against the wall at the moment. Stuart and Ian face a showdown in a takeaway. You are not locking that door. Oh, you are not allowed to lock us in this place. Oh. What an absolute shithole. Paul and Phil repossess a potentially lethal flat. Is he hot and water the electrics? Hello? And Steve's in for a shock. There's another person in here. Could you put some clothes on? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>